my new apartment. Right now we're standing in my bedroom, as you may not be able to tell because there's literally no furniture in here whatsoever. Really, there's not a lot going on, but that's kind of good for me because it's setting the bar low, so even if I do a crappy job thinking over this place, it's gonna look better than it does right now. I have four wonderful blank white walls. I have this pretty decent sized window. I have a little closet in one corner. This wall, which is just completely blank, so that's super exciting. And then this wall, which has the door, which is also super exciting. The only furniture that I have right now is this sad little foam mat that's on the floor with my bedding. Pretty much the only thing that I hate about this place is the carpet. I know I sound dramatic, but it's absolutely fucking disgusting. It's just like so many colors, like pick a color to be. Probably the real reason I hate it is just because it's giving me PTSD to my high school, in which all the rooms were covered with this carpet. So there are a lot of awkward memories attached to that, a lot of unrequited crushes, a lot of acne in unfortunate places on my face. First step is going to be going to Home Depot. Not even on the 405 yet. Why is there traffic? It's 1 p.m. on a Thursday. Oh, I love LA. It's not about personality matrixels and charts. It's all about the bumps in your heart. got back from the Home Depot. My makeup and my dignity are nowhere to be found. My bank account is not happy with me because it turns out that power tools and carpet kind of add up. I will say though, the men at Home Depot are amongst the nicest people with a Y chromosome I've ever met in LA. Two Scandinavian guys who were parked next to me helped me move these giant ass carpets into my car. I also saw this guy who looked like he was straight out of an Abercrombie catalog for turning a single plank of wood. So I'm gonna take a shower now. I'm gonna eat some cereal because that is the only food that I own currently. And then I'll catch up with you guys and we'll start putting together this room. Hey guys, so I am back from the shower and wearing this exciting new other white t-shirt. I apologize that my outfits are not gonna be cute in this video. You either get home improvement Ashley or fashion Ashley. There's no intersection of the two. First thing we're gonna do is move out my pseudo bed depressing ass situation. We're gonna move that out of the room. We're gonna bring in the rug. I feel wildly sexual and I don't know why. Are you trying to take the condom off? Just kidding. This Never happens to me. Always use protection goods. Well, there she is. It smells aggressively like rubbing chemicals, but not bad. So to explain what's going on here, basically, my room is the most inconvenient set of dimensions possible. It's 13.75 feet by 11.25 feet. I honestly don't know who the fuck designed this. So in order to cover this entire ugly ass carpet, I bought two eight foot by 10 foot rugs. Now the problem here is that no matter how you configure these two rugs, they will not cover the entire room. However, there is enough total square footage between the two carpets. So my plan is I'm gonna unfurl one of the rugs and I'm just gonna leave it as is. And then the other rug is gonna be my torture victim, and I unfortunately am gonna cut it apart with a box cutter. I am so sorry for this rug and its family members because you are about to watch a murder on screen. I feel like Gustavo and Breaking Bad. You do this, all you'll have left is an eight million dollar hole in the ground. This is gonna be so painful. This feels so wrong. After I cut the carpet to size and put it in place, I just kind of judged the edges where the two carpets met a little bit to make that seem less noticeable. And then I just repeated that process for the remaining pieces of the carpet. Nothing too complicated. One thing I did pay special attention to though was that the knots on this carpet are going in a certain direction. You can see it if you flip the carpet over and there are these ridges. So I made sure that those rows went the same direction lengthwise across my entire room.
So next up, we're just gonna start bringing in some furniture. I've gotten some furniture from some really random ass places so far. I have this big ass mirror that I bought off of Craigslist. I also have this desk from Ikea. It was only $40, which is super freaking affordable. And then I also have some shelves that are in the same style that I'm gonna build. So an unforeseen disadvantage of this carpet is I think I dropped a screw somewhere and it's literally impossible to find in this bitch because she is so thick. One day it'll inevitably stab into my foot, I guess. I'll find it then. I have a bunch of mirrors and plants that are actually from Damon from the travel channel, Damon and Joe. I don't know if you guys know them, they're like the best fucking travel YouTubers. But they're actually moving out of LA, so they left me some plants to take care of and also some really lovely decor. So thank you so much to Damon for that. What fucking day is it? You officially know that it's summer when you can't remember what day of the week it is. It's Tuesday. It's about four days since I moved. Wait, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Apparently I can't do math either, so good thing I'm a film major. It is six days after I moved in. I have been sleeping on the floor like a fucking badger. I had a guy over and I had to explain that there was literally no furniture in my room, but we may do. That is too much information. Anyway. As you can see, my bed has just arrived today. Initially, I was really set on building one myself and I spent like six hours watching YouTube tutorials on it online. But the problem with living alone and being weak is that I would have to take the entire bed once I built it outside into the back of my apartment in order to do the varnish. And then I'd have to bring the assembled bed all the way back up the stairs and into this apartment, which given the fact that I haven't exercised in about four years, is damn near impossible. Anyways, because I did want to save $50 and not have to pay the delivery man to assemble this for me, I'm assembling it myself. And it turns out that unlike Ikea furniture, it doesn't fucking come with a manual. So I'm just kind of wing it as I go along. officially a week since I've moved in. Another day, another plain white shirt and shorts because my outfits are popping in this video. Honestly, the room looks really good from this angle, but um, there's actually just like a pile of random crap on the floor because I'm in that awkward in-between stage where I'm still trying to organize all of my stuff. Anyway, so today we are tackling this wall behind me. I decided I'm gonna try to install a faux brick wall. This faux brick wall idea, by the way, is almost completely ripped off the Sorry Girls. Um, Hi Kelsey and Becky if you're watching this. Kelsey and Becky are actually low-key my bosses because I edit videos for them as well. I'll link the original video below. It's gonna be way more professional than whatever the fuck I end up doing here. But basically what we're doing is burning a brick pattern into some styrofoam sheets. So I have my measurements of my wall written out on this sheet of paper and I'm gonna try my best to kind of Tetris these pieces into the shape of the wall that I need. So I started out this project by cutting my styrofoam to size. And yes, I am using a sewing tape measure and a small ruler to do this because I didn't want to pay like an extra $20 for proper measuring tools. Hardware stores usually carry eight foot long sheets of styrofoam insulation, which would make this process so much easier, but I had to buy smaller ones so they would actually fit in the trunk of my car. The one upside is that these pre-cut pieces are a lot cheaper. This is three quarter inch thick styrofoam and it only cost me around $30 for enough to cover my entire wall. Once I had a panel cut to size, I started tracing out the brick pattern. I first traced out rows that were four inches apart, then cut a brick template out of cardboard. Any random cardboard box you have lying around from your excessive online shopping will work for this. I just cut out a template that was four inches tall by eight inches wide, and I added a line down the middle, which will help us later when we're laying down that alternating brick pattern. the gross lighting by the way it's like nighttime now because tracing that out took me way longer than i expected i am probably gonna be up till like 2 a.m tonight but now it is time to use this thingy this is a plastic welding tool that i bought off amazon for like 25 dollars, which was definitely way too much to spend on a tool that i'll literally never use again but it basically just like heats up and then this triangle will hopefully melt my styrofoam for me i would 
highly recommend going outside if you can, but first of all, I didn't want to get caught filming outside by my attractive neighbors. And second of all, I live on the second floor and I don't have an extension cord large enough to go down the entire staircase. So we're gonna make do by just opening the windows and blowing a vent fan. I'm probably gonna get cancer and lose a good like two years off my lifespan by doing this, but I'm gonna have a really good faux brick wall for about 12 months while I live here. So. After about an hour of burning styrofoam and a good 200 dead brain cells later, I genuinely felt like I wanted to throw up. So I took a break for the night and woke up fresh and ready in the morning to do exactly the same thing all over again. As I was melting the design, I made sure to line up adjacent pieces of styrofoam and melt right over the edge of the two pieces so that design would match up exactly and help minimize the appearance of the seam. Next, it was time to add some brick texture. You can get pretty creative with this. You can go all Jackson Pollock on it if you want, but my main techniques were tapping the styrofoam lightly to create these tiny little dents and then dragging the tool quickly across the surface to get rid of that bubbly looking styrofoam texture. Lastly, I went in with a coat of white semi-gloss latex paint. As I was painting, I purposefully let some of that black Sharpie show through in some spots because I felt like it helped create an illusion of a three-dimensional, kind of worn in, slightly dirty looking brick wall. I am about halfway through painting and I realized like an idiot, I didn't buy enough paint. What I didn't account for is that styrofoam is a thirsty ass bit and she absorbs a lot of paint. I put like a thick coat on and like, yeah, it's white, but it still to me looks very clearly styrofoamy. It doesn't really have like that painted texture that I really want to get. So that means that I'm going to go to Home Depot for the third time in a single week. Uh -huh. I want to find out. And now, a brief intermission for the least informative clothing rack tutorial of all time. So I just finished the second coat of paint and I've changed into something cuter because I realized that my outfits were getting a little depressing in this video. I still have paint on my knees though, so that's couture. So the first step is gonna be to measure out these things. These uh, rods is what they're called. Okay. Oh, I should probably have a Sharpie. I don't wanna get up though. I just... So apparently if you don't have a Sharpie, you can just use some scissors to, to nick it and then you won't have to get up because you're a lazy piece of shit. This is the fucking worst type of packaging, by the way. Okay, so from what I hear, uh, what the kids on the street are saying is that you just unscrew this thingy to fit your pipe and then you just give it a little of that action. It's like a little pizza cutter, but for pipes. Ooh, we have breakage. This seems kind of short for a clothing rack, but we're gonna go for it since I've cut this piece now. I'm gonna pull you guys in for a nice shot of my crotch here so you can see what I'm doing. Oh god, that's very crotchal. Oh, there she goes. One blister later, we have all of the pieces cut. So now all we really have to do is assemble it using these little connecty nubberoos. I did a super bad job of explaining this next part on camera, but basically I just used an epoxy glue to secure all of the pipe nubbins to the connecting nubberoos and the official terms. And then after drying overnight, this is what it looked like. All right, now back to that brick wall. Because I wasn't trying to blow like $50 on command strips, I ended up using this blue putty. It's what I used to use as a kid all the time back in my day before your kids came in with your command strips and tweets and socialism. For extra security, I did use a couple command strips just at key locations like where two pieces of styrofoam overlapped. Before I laid in the last pieces of faux brick, I installed curtain rod holders on either side of the window and then cut a small slit in the styrofoam so it would fit over nicely. Lastly, I went back in again with some paint, laying a pretty generous amount over the lines where two pieces of styrofoam met to minimize the appearance of those seams and make it look, hopefully, more like one big brick wall and not some random ass pieces of styrofoam stuck together. I spent the next few weeks procrastinating editing this video, <clears throat> I mean, putting up some finishing touches on the room, which in all seriousness was quite a task when you're as cripplingly indecisive as I am. I also went hunting for some furniture at my local thrift stores, added a frankly excessive number of plants, finally moved all my crap off the ground and onto these shelves, and of course hid all of the random shit that I still didn't want you guys to see in this video under my bed. It's about three weeks later and I finally, finally have the room exactly the way I like it, so why don't you follow me and I'll show you around. I'm just gonna move the camera because I don't have a cameraman.
So let's start on this side of the room, which might be familiar to some of you guys from my videos. This is my little like filming slash modeling corner. I wanted something with a relatively plain background so I could film all of my outfit videos and shoot clothing for my website, but I didn't want it to like scream to visitors that I spend all day taking videos of myself. So this is a compromise that we've reached. On this side, we have this freaking gorgeous mirror that I got from Damon. I was thinking about trying to hang it up on the wall, but it's so heavy. I was honestly really scared it would tear out my drywall. So for now, she's just staying on the floor just in case you wanna look at yourself while you're laying on the carpet, as one does. Over here, we have our lovely clothing rack, which has managed to not fall apart on me yet, so that's great. I just hung up some of my favorite and most worn clothing pieces, and also whatever made like an aesthetically pleasing color palette. Now, a little farther over, I just wanted to show you guys this piece of artwork. You guys might remember this from my last apartment. I took a lot of art classes as a kid. Everything else I've ever drawn or painted has just ended up in a pile under my childhood bed, never to be seen by the light again, except for this piece. Over here, we have my little closet corner in the room. As you guys saw before, I have this big ass mirror from Ikea. This handsome little planty boy from Damon. I actually tied a little ribbon around his pod. It helped tie in but um, the plant with the rest of the room. Okay, over here I have this shelf from Ikea that's kind of like an accessories wall slash random crap shelf. I have some bags, some shoes, some plants, obviously, and a little shelf for my makeup because I didn't have room for a vanity or anything like that. So in order to get ready every morning, I just pop a squat on this carpet. And then as a final touch for this side of the room, because I felt like it looked a little bit plain, I bought some extra curtains from Ikea and I just pinned them up at the top of the wall using thumbtacks. It's a plain white, but it still has some texture, adds a little bit of dimension without being too overwhelming. This side of the room is where the magic happens. And by the magic, I mean hours and hours of editing and also sex. Um, this chair is a new little addition to my room. I knew I was on the lookout for a big comfy chair because this space just felt a little bit empty. And also, it's right next to my closet. And I don't know about you guys, but every single time I try to put an outfit together, I end up with a mountain of clothes. And that mountain had either been ending up on my floor or on my bed, and then I have to clean it all up before I could go to sleep. So, like the master procrastinator that I am, I figured if I have this chair, I can put all of my clothes on the chair, then just go to sleep and deal with cleaning up my shit a lot later. I would also say this is a nice little cozy reading nook, but if we're being honest, I haven't finished a book in years. So really what it is is an armchair for sipping tea, scrolling through memes, probably doing a lot of editing. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, I got this chair from Council Thrift Stores for $50, which is honestly such a steal. I also put this little planty boy here. There is a distinct chance that I'm gonna kick this over at some point in my sleep, but that is something we're gonna deal with when we get to it. Up here, I also have a few travel themed things, like the piece of hipster shit that I am. There's this big map of Los Angeles, courtesy of Damon. And then next to it, there's this retro California license plate that I got from the Melrose Trading Post. Paid like $15 for it, which is too much for a fucking crusty license plate, but I think it looks really cute. All right, this side of the room is obviously home to our artisanal faux brick wall. Dare I say it's so nice that it was actually worth all the brain cells that I lost from inhaling styrofoam fumes? No, probably not but it's close. <laughs> Anyways, I freaking love this wall. I feel like I'm transported to Soho or Tribeca or anywhere that's not this sketchy ass building that I live in. We do have one new addition, which is this little fan, which is vastly ill-equipped to actually keep me cool in a top floor apartment without AC, but he's trying his best, so thank you. And that brings us to our final side of the room. This section is kind of my workspace. It has my desk and my shelf from Ikea holding all of my kind of work stuff and also an excessive number of plants. I have this huge bag of receipts because I hoard receipts like a madman. My filming equipment, most of which is missing right now because I'm actually using it to film this video. A sewing machine that one of my subscribers gave me that I still need to learn how to use. And some packing materials and of course a little trash can because that's exciting, great. Over here at my desk, I ended up changing out the chair. I used to have that little wooden one, but I felt like it was too many hard materials. Like the shelf is metal and glass, the desk is metal and glass, and then the wood was also kind of hard, if that makes sense. So I changed it out for this zebra chair that I actually found on the street for free. I live in a college town and all of the students have been like in a mass migration out of Westwood in the past couple weeks. So they just leave their furniture on the street and then desperate people like me come and pick it up. Does it have lice or bed bugs? Maybe. I don't know, but it was free. It is a little bit loud for my usual taste. I would never buy this on my own, but I honestly really love it. I feel like it gives the room kind of like a vintage safari vibe. All right, and I guess that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching this entire journey. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. I am so excited and lucky to have a place of my own where I can just be creative, a place that I can really call home. And yeah, I'm just so happy with how it turned out. A huge thank you to you guys for making it possible for me to actually pay rent on a room of my own, really for making it possible for me to buy any of this stuff. So 
I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for watching those ads and helping me pay my rent. I can't wait to film more videos in here. I can't wait to live here for the next year. And thank you so much for watching. See you guys next week. Bye.